All right, everyone, it's time to play. We're doing abstract. That means you can do it your way with your colors, anything goes. So I'm just squeezing right from the tube in whatever area I want. And I'm starting with black and white. It's always good to start with white to keep your painting nice and light. Okay, then you take a knife and you just play around with moving it in interesting ways. Make contact with the paint and pull. Now make sure that you don't push too, too hard so that you leave some paint nicely spread across the canvas. Paint doesn't have to go all the way to the edge. We're going to be painting the edge later on. Always clean your knife. Now we can do fun things. You can pick any color you like. It's all good. Just have fun with it. I'm doing some fluorescence, orange and pink, and they're just delicious. And of course, some blue. I have blue in almost all my paintings. <laughs> it might be just my personality. All right, we're doing um, do the palette knife again. Making sure you contact the paint nicely on the bottom of the knife before you pull it. And pull lightly enough to get those glorious little splotches of color towards the end of your pull. You will notice I clean the bottom of my knife off fairly often, not always. Whatever's on the bottom of your knife will end up on your painting. So if it gets muddy, <laughs> <laughs> Under there, we wipe it off. Looks a bit like a floral arrangement right now, doesn't it? And you can you can tell I am just playing. If you try to be precise and copy exactly what I do, you are going to drive yourself insane. Don't do that. Have fun with this. It's like I always say, magic happens when you let go. Oh, always nice to add some yellow. Pretty much have the entire rainbow of colors represented here. You don't have to, you can use more of a, more of a muted palette. Ha, <laughs> more knifing. Your painting though, not need people. Never knife people, only paintings. Now the whole mood is changing with that green. Lovely. Now my, my thought process is I'm trying to create a little bit of movement and interest with my strokes. Now I'm trying to fill in the edges and I'm using some white. I'm using a, a squeeze bottle, but just so you know, you can easily, just as easily use a tube of paint. You don't need to have squeeze bottles if you don't have them available. It's just a quick way in a tutorial for me to get paint on fast. Now we're switching to a brush and we're just trying to create a little bit more blend and calmness on the edges of the paintings. Now, at this point, you're kind of painting over sometimes some things that are really nice and you don't want to lose them. But the problem is if all everything in your painting is detailed and interesting, um, there's no focus and it loses its impact. So I'm actually trying to quiet parts of the painting with the brush, which is, the brush is really wonderful for that because it just blends and pulls everything and mixes things together, the colors together. This isn't always the case, but in this painting, I decided to make the detailed, more focal area in the center and the more faded, quieter areas towards the edges of the canvas. 
So you'll see me pulling in from the edge with the brush just to kind of mute and pull and blend those colors. Now, there, another painter that I uh, took lessons from at some point um, used to call this killing her children, <laughs> which sounds really awful. But, you know, there's really pretty parts in the painting that but just have, they have to go because they're distracting from the focal area. So you got to kill your children because, you know, sometimes our little glorious painting accidents almost feel like our little children that we've created. <laughs> And we, we fall in love with all of those little marks that we make. So much fun. I hope you're having fun too. Just doing some more quieting on the edges there. I do really like grays in paintings. It gives a nice place for the eye to have a rest and to balance the bright colors in other areas. There you see my head stealing focus away. <laughs> it's very difficult to paint above a painting without, you know, putting my eyes close to the painting, which puts it in the way of the camera. <laughs> puts me really in the way of the camera. So these are tools that can make interesting marks on in the paint. Use whatever you have. You don't have to go and get fancy art supplies if you don't want to. Although if you do want to, the art supply stores will love you. <laughs> Lots of things you can spend money on in the arts and crafts stores. I, I'm using line to kind of more detail the focal area of this painting. And by the way, I don't have a preconceived goal of what I want this to look like. I am playing and just resting whenever I decide I like an area, it, I call it done. I am enjoying the movement that this painting seems to be creating. It's very dynamic, which I'm kind of known for. <laughs> yeah, more blending. Now I'm taking the wrong end of a brush to make some more lines like I'm drawing or sketching into the paint because that's fun. You can just let your intuition guide you. I just wanted those lines to continue out a little bit into that one area. Nice and blurry there for you for a second. There you go.
I am really smoothing that area out since I have such bright colors in the center and so much dynamic drama I decided I needed a lot more rest on the side but you do you so if you liked all the, the other things that were on your edges and you didn't want to kill your babies or your children that is perfectly fine it's your painting Again, squeeze bottle. You can just put your brush in some white on a palette if you'd rather and brush it on. Or you can wait for the painting to dry and use markers. That works too if you want more lines. There's so many ways to create. Now you'll see here because I use the um, squeeze bottle the paint's a little more liquidy in the squeeze bottles and it didn't work well with the knife so I had to fight with it a little bit here but eventually I win chose to add some squeeze black for contrast. Again, not something you have to do. And I wanted to spread it a bit. So I'm using a fan brush, which you absolutely don't need. You could use any brush to do this technique if you wanted to. I'm just playing. I'll show you a different way to bring some darks in. This is just a finer squeeze bottle that does finer lines. Or as you're going to see in a second. Ooh. It also likes to, it also can be really nice polka dots. I like polka dots. <laughs> because they're so fun. Now I know I'm here, here I am playing a lot with lines and dots. If your painting is still wet and you don't have squeeze bottles, it would be a little more difficult for you to get those finer lines and dots without disturbing the paint. So I, if I were you, I would wait for it to dry and either use a, a small brush or a marker and you can get very similar effects with your lines.
so hard to keep my big fat head out of the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now the toothbrush comes in. You have to add some water to your paint, mix it really well, load your toothbrush, and pull the bristles back with your finger. Make some nice splatters. And just adding some white final touches there. Got dark in that area. And I think I'm pretty much gonna call this one finished. Yay! Thanks so much for hanging out with me in my studio. Feel free to connect with me in the comments or check out my social media sites below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, show those like and subscribe buttons some love. See you next Tuesday.